I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Michelle Kennan Apperson who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Welcome. Thank you. Well congratulations on being named a Teacher of the Year. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. So to first tell us, uh, tell us where you teach and tell us what you teach. I teach a sixth grade at Sutterville Elementary and uh, teach all subjects. So tell us a little bit about your classroom and some of the things that you do differently and tell us about your class. Well I have 33 students and, and we're really blessed to have students from all over Sacramento and in our neighborhood, our neighborhood kids. And um, I really love project-based learning so we do lots of projects. We um, hang out and study archaeology together and mummify chicken livers and I have an archaeology set um, dig on campus and we study ancient Greece and, and togas and make websites about e ecosystems and, and study ecosystems before our trip to Sly Park and we have a really good time exploring the different topics within sixth grade and volcanoes and rocks and um, participle phrases and appositives and the different math concepts that we have. And um, we do a great project with our buddy class, a cross-age tutoring, um, cross-age buddy partnership, where we study frogs and the life cycles of frogs and how frogs in, are in danger due to chytrid and habitat loss. Mm -hmm. And so that's really a lot of fun. And we participate in several community projects and, and do really the great stuff that we're supposed to be doing in school, which is learning, engaging ourselves in community, and having a good time. Explain a little bit more about project-based learning, you know, what it is and, and how it's important, how it affects the students' learning. Well, I, I personally like project-based learning um, cause, because I know that not every kid's a, a test taker, and I myself have always found projects far more engaging. They allow me and they allow students to really focus on what they find interesting within the topic, to create for themselves a lot of um, information, research tools, different things that I teach them, they can then apply to the project and really gain a deeper understanding and make these incredible products, you know, three-dimensional products, they can make websites, they can show me the ways that they've learned in, in, in more than just a test. And I find that really exciting and engaging, and so do the kids. It, it's not as easy as mm -hmm. the kids would like it with a test where you learn the information and then move on, but it certainly is more rewarding. It gives them more of a connection with the material? and Oh, and yeah, absolutely. Hopefully a lifelong connection to what they're learning, too. So w when, you're, when you're dealing with you know, a number of students in the classroom, obviously some are more easily motivated than others. Mm -hmm. How do you reach out to those that, that are more of a challenge than others to, uh, to motivate? Well, you always want to find something that engages them mm -hmm. and, find, and piques their interest level. Um, my students usually work in groups a lot, so that's really nice because if they're working with their friends, they're going to want sometimes to do more for their friend than they would me. So <laughs> I don't know why. Sixth grade. <laughs> um, and they... Uh, you know, and sometimes it is difficult, but you know, for the most part, if they see the other kids having a good time and learning and really engaged, then they themselves want to do it too. We do a unit in probability and statistics called fantasy baseball. And a lot of the kids don't know what baseball is when we first start. And what's so great about this is, is every year I have a few kids that say, oh, I hate baseball, I don't wanna play baseball, I don't understand baseball. And as we go through and we explore statistics and averages and on-base percentage and home run to strikeout ratios and why this player is a good offensive versus that player and build our teams mm -hmm. and then they get to do creative things like uniforms and actually learn how to score a game and then study the probability that goes along with it. Their idea of what baseball looked like before and after are two different things. And then usually by about halfway through, they're like, wow, I really like this game. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it has a completely different, besides the surface of watching the game, it has a completely different under the surface thing kind of going on that's really cool mathematically that you get information for now and now it's exciting, isn't it? And they 
usually agree, you know, it's a lot of fun. Fantasy baseball math is a really good way to teach statistics. It's not about the baseball. Yeah, it's not, and it's more about the offensive game, whereas I think sometimes in sixth grade they think it's more about the defensive part of the game. So we study sabermetrics and, and different cool things like that through Bill James. So how, how important is it uh, to show students how to work in groups? Because it seems that's kind of the way the American workforce is going now, where it's a lot of group project, group mentality. I think collaborative um, groups, collaborative working situations, um, we have to be able to, in a digital age, be able to work more collaboratively. And um, my, even the high school my son's going gonna go to, he's going to New Tech High, puts an emphasis on collaborative situations. And I think if you work in a situation, anywhere you work at when you become an adult, you're gonna always have to talk to other people, work interdependently, you know, work, work, work together. I don't know if, inter I don't know, anyway, <laughs> if that's the right word. But you know, you really have to be able to synergize well. You have to be able to put your priorities in the right place. You have to be able to delegate responsibilities and then as a group collectively pull back together and be able to put a product together that is good for the company and good for your team. And so I think that translates down into an elementary school classroom for me as a way to be able to teach those skills, especially at sixth grade as they're transitioning to middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. It's a great tool to teach them because high school and junior high, you really move into that more, even more so before you hit the workforce. Mm -hmm. So how many years have you been teaching now? 13. 13. This will be my 14th year. Okay, so in that amount of time, what, what, are some of the, what are some of the biggest changes or challenges you've seen in education? Well, the biggest changes, and gratefully so, um, one of them has been when I went into the, when I was finishing my credential program, we were moving into standards-based instruction, and now we're moving into Common Core standards, which is really great. Um, that leads us to a lot more in-depth type of standard work, which is wonderful because I'm not going to have to run through and teach like all these different things. I'm going to be able to teach important core things in a really focused, detailed way. And I'm thinking about writing specifically for my kids instead of having to teach like five or six different ways to write that were in my um, language arts book. I really get to focus on three very distinct writing styles and teach them in greater depth so that the students have a very good grasp when they walk out of my room as to what a persuasive piece looks like. And then the other change that's really happened since the time that I've entered teaching in 14 short years is the amount of money per year we have per student. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the toughest thing is to know that the kids aren't getting as much funding as they used to. And even in 10 short years, what that looks like inside of a classroom situation and a school situation within our school district. So what made you become a teacher? Um, I have my father's side of the family, <laughs> are all teachers, a lot of them are teachers. Okay. And I've also had and been blessed with um, many teachers who are absolutely wonderful and uh, inspired me, uh, gave me confidence when I didn't have any, believed in me more than I could have at that point for myself, pushed me and challenged me in ways that I thought, oh, you're crazy, I'll never be able to do this. And then when I got through to the other side, it was like, wow, you knew things about me that I couldn't see for myself. And um, those kind of distinct uh, memories connected so close to school and, and the fact that we grew up um, socioeconomically challenged. Um, and my teachers, my sc school was always my safe place from what was going on in the rest of the world. So it was really wonderful to be able to realize and know um, in my heart that I could do that for um, 100, 200, 300 kids, however long I'm in teaching makes it worth mm. it. Mm. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Michelle Kennan apperson who is one of uh, two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for your time and congratulations Thanks. again. Thank you, I appreciate it.